Welcome to this presentation on the use of MathWorks tools for automating and processing RF and microwave network parameter measurements and use of this same data for extracting behavioral circuit models of RF and microwave components. We are going to be covering two main topics today. The first topic will describe how you can automate the measurement workflow for RF and microwave component measurements using MATLAB. This will allow you to easily access RF and microwave network parameter data in software tools and characterize your components in either a prototype setting or a manufacturing setting. Following on from the automation of RF and microwave measurements, I will then be covering how you can use MATLAB and some MATLAB toolboxes to convert the network parameter data into an equivalent circuit representation. I will perform model extractions for passive RF and microwave components and more specifically microwave coupled resonator filters. So first of all, I would like to talk about how MATLAB fits into a design workflow and then specifically address how this same workflow can be applied to the prototyping stage of microwave resonator filter design. When you are using MATLAB, there are really three things that you can do. Import data, analyze the data, and then finally share the results of your data analysis. First off, whether it is through measurements, data files, or some other means, you are accessing some sort of data as an input to the analysis that you will be doing with MATLAB. You can take the data that you accessed in the previous step and put it through an algorithm to characterize the nature of your data. Characterization could mean many different things, such as statistical analysis, linearization, time domain to frequency domain conversion, or in our case, behavioral circuit model extraction. But the bottom line is that you are going to be using MATLAB to perform some sort of analysis on the data, and depending on the type and number of times your data needs to be analyzed, you may want to use MATLAB to automate this analysis. Finally, once you have applied algorithms to your data and performed analysis on your data, you can take the output from the previous step and share this data with colleagues or customers. The way this data is shared can be very different across different organizations. In some cases, this information will be shared as reports. In other cases, it will be used as an input for downstream design. Today, we will convert network parameter data obtained from measuring a microwave component into a circuit model that is in the same format as your golden reference model that you obtain via filter synthesis. This will allow you to convert a fine model, that is your bench prototype, and convert it into a course model that you can compare against a golden reference model and then modify it so as to make adjustments to your bench prototype in order to obtain the performance of the golden reference model. So the first thing that we need to do to extract a circuit model from network parameters is to get measured data recorded on a network analyzer into MATLAB. On the slide, you can see that I have a remote display that shows microwave measurements being made on a Keysight FieldFox vector network analyzer. I will later show a short video with the actual measurement setup and the automated measurement sequence. Before I get back into this, I want to talk about what I aim to accomplish. From a workflow standpoint, what I want to do is take data from each of the four traces, these four traces, and bring it into MATLAB and write it to an S2P data file so that I can access this data later when I am doing model extraction on this same data. As you can see, I have a MATLAB script file that I use to get the data 
and generate the MATLAB figures that show the data from each of the four traces. But how do I actually do this? So the first thing that we need to think about is how do we interface MATLAB with measurement equipment? Well, the easiest way to do this is through a MATLAB add-on called Instrument Control Toolbox. This will allow you to easily interface with a vector network analyzers with a combination of MATLAB functions and Skippy commands. The toolbox will also allow you to interface with the network analyzer via a number of different protocols including TCP, IP, GPIB, and USB interfaces. The toolbox has a number of built-in commands so that you can easily interface with the network analyzer and use Skippy commands to recall instrument states, read data from individual traces, and finally put the instrument back into a desired final state to continue measurement work with the analyzer. As you can see, the toolbox supports many network analyzer manufacturers, but today we, we will be highlighting the use of a Keysight network analyzer. So before I go through the actual MATLAB script that takes the trace data from the network analyzer and writes it to a, a S2P file, I wanted to highlight key aspects of the workflow that I'm going to be following. The first step is to connect an actual microwave component to the network analyzer, in this case a high performance microwave cavity filter. Next we are going to open the network an interface to the network analyzer in order for us to use the MATLAB script file to control the network analyzer and extract network parameter data from the analyzer. The first thing that will be done once the network interface has been established will be to set up the network analyzer in order to make quality measurements of the filter, specifically the instrument state that contains the network analyzer calibration will be recalled. Once the proper instrument state has been recalled, the MATLAB script will be used to start the measurement of the two port S parameters. After the measurement, we import into MATLAB the four traces, as well as the 2,501 individual frequency points that span each of the four traces. Once we have the trace span frequencies and network parameter data from each of the four traces, we can write this data to a S2P file using functions from the MATLAB add-on called RF Toolbox. RF Toolbox will be a key tool in the model extraction covered in the next section. Here you can see we have the measurement setup. The cavity filter is connected to the Keysight FieldFox network analyzer via Type N cables. The analyzer traces are mirrored on the display. To the right of the remote display is the MATLAB script that is used for interfacing with the network analyzer and extracting measurement data back into MATLAB. At this point, we will begin executing the script for the MATLAB Keysight VNA interface. The first thing that needs to occur is to set up a connection between MATLAB and the instrument and recall the proper calibration state of the network analyzer. With the proper instrument state recalled, the MATLAB script is used to read in frequency values and the S parameters of each of the four traces into MATLAB. As you can see, each trace is put into a hold condition. As data is read in, sequential traces will become active. Following this, I want to put the instrument back into its previous state with all traces running continuously. Now that all of the trace data is in MATLAB, we are going to put it into an S2P file. The dialog box will allow us to name the data file. Also, plots of each of the S parameter elements are made using functions from RF Toolbox. The network analyzer has been returned to its original state and we have successfully imported S parameter data from the VNA back into MATLAB. So now that we have completed the process for accessing the network parameter 
data available on a vector network analyzer, let's turn our attention to the diagnosis or model extraction of the microwave cavity filter. What does diagnosis or model extraction mean? Well put simply, it means that I want to derive the coupling matrix for the cavity filter from the measured network parameter data. This coupling matrix can be directly compared to the coupling matrix obtained from network synthesis. The differences between the golden reference coupling matrix and the extracted coupling matrix will direct you on what mechanical adjustments should be made to the actual filter in order to obtain a response that resembles the filter response of the golden reference synthesis model. This process can be readily used during the prototyping stage of filter design so as to obtain an optimum design. This can also be used in a manufacturing environment in order to reduce labor costs associated with tuning cavity filters. As a side note, this technique can be used to simply extract models of other types of microwave filters such as printed interdigital, comb line, or hairpin filters to name just a few. The models that you extract will allow you to characterize filter performance at an individual resonator level rather than at the network parameter level where you have simply a black box model of the filter. So although I would like to take credit for all of the things that are in this presentation, I must acknowledge all of the good analytical and research work that I was able to access in each of the listed references. Each of these references allowed me to lay the path to take network parameter data and extract a behavioral model. A lot of the formulation that I used comes from the analysis derived and described in each of the references listed. Now what we need to do is transform the S parameter data into a format that will allow us to extract a nodal model. In this case, I'm going to convert the S parameters into Y parameters and then use a vector fitting technique to extract a Laplace domain model. The Laplace domain model will have twice the number of poles as the filter has individual resonators. This constraint is necessary in order to derive a behavioral model that can be directly compared to the golden reference synthesis model. Once the passband Laplace domain model of the Y parameters has been extracted, it will be necessary to convert it to the low pass domain. Thus, the derived poles and residues of the extracted passband model will be converted to a low pass equivalent and the number of poles will be reduced to the same number of poles as the cavity filter. This allows me to construct the load source transversal coupling matrix that can be converted into a folded format and then subsequently optimized to get into a format that resembles the form of the golden reference coupling matrix. Finally, once this folded coupling matrix format has been obtained and optimized, the network parameters corresponding to this matrix format can be calculated and compared to the metric result. This will quantify how well the optimized folded coupling matrix describes the behavior of the actual cavity filter. As you will see, the optimization routine used will be set up to maintain the characteristics of the, new, of the transversal matrix, but also match the network parameter measurements. Let's get into some of the details as to how the network parameters will be transformed into a behavioral circuit model. The first step in this process is to convert the S parameters into a format like that of a nodal admittance matrix. In the 2003 paper by Richard Cameron, Advanced Coupling Matrix Synthesis Techniques for Microwave Filters, he described a filter synthesis technique that was based on a transversal representation of a filter, rather than a ladder network format. This transversal matrix approach would allow a filter designer to synthesize a larger number of filter structures than previously described in literature. In addition, the techniques in this paper could also be applied to reverse engineer a transversal or folded matrix 
from a microwave filter's network parameters. Once the S parameters have been converted into their Y parameter counterparts, the RF toolbox function, rational fit, can be used to calculate a vector fitted model that is equivalent to the diagram included in the accompanying slide. Once we have the Y parameters converted into a Laplace domain format, they will then be manipulated in order to populate elements of the transversal matrix. On the accompanying slide, you can see the shortened derivation of how the transversal matrix elements are determined. As you can see, all of the elements are based off of the poles and residues calculated from the Y parameter matrix. One thing to bear in mind is that the poles and residues that are calculated using rational fit are based off of the passband data. In order to make ready use of these quantities, they will need to be transformed into their low pass counterparts. Once this task has been completed, the quantities derived from the measured results can be used to populate the transversal matrix as depicted in the accompanying slide. A transversal matrix description is a good mathematical description of a microwave filter. However, this is not practically implementable in any manner and thus the transversal matrix needs to be transformed into a format that resembles the topology of a realizable mechanical configuration. To convert the transversal matrix into a folded structure, a set of similarity transformations will be applied to the transversal matrix. These transformations will not change the fundamental properties of the matrix. Specifically, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix will remain unchanged. Only the appearance of the matrix will change. The rotation matrix, R, has the unique characteristic of being a unitary matrix where it also has a determinant of 1 and when the matrix R is multiplied by its matrix transpose the, the result will always be the identity matrix. These matrix characteristics assure that the transform transversal matrix retains its original matrix characteristics. Now, one of the things that will undoubtedly occur when you have completed applying the similarity transformations and the general folded matrix format results, you are going to have matrix, el matrix elements that are populated that are not actually present in the golden reference synthesis model. This is an expected result. Since all filter elements interact with all other filter elements, including the output and output coupling structures. The amount of interaction may be very small, especially when compared to interaction between adjacent elements, but nonetheless, it still occurs. The decision to make at this point is what to do with the derived folded matrix and what is the best way to compare it to the synthesized coupling matrix. The mess the method that I followed was to simply set coupling values that were more than 10 times smaller than adjacent matrix element values to zero, and then also set undesired elements to zero, and then optimize the values of the desired matrix elements so that the resulting matrix would retain the performance of the measured data, and the reduced folded matrix would have matrix, matrix properties that were very close to the originally derived transversal matrix. Specifically, retain the eigenvalues of the original transversal matrix. An optimization MATLAB function was implemented that used functionality available from the MATLAB add-on called Optimization Toolbox. The optimization conditions were selected to assure that the reformulated folded matrix was as close to identical as possible to the original transversal matrix. In other filter synthesis articles, it has been showing that depending on the filtering function that you are looking to implement, a vast number of, of different filter topologies are available to choose from. In a similar manner, the transversal matrix can be converted into a vast number of different matrix format, and thus the intent is to retain matrix properties throughout all of the matrix transformations.
So with all of the algorithm implementation details covered, let's see the algorithm in action. As you can see from the figure on the slide, I have an 8-pole dielectric resonator filter that has two symmetric cross couplings. And you will also notice that the input and output ports are electrically coupled to the first and eighth resonators. I measured the performance of nine similar filters in order to prove out the robustness of the algorithm. Each of the filters have a similar performance and thus results obtained are consistent. After I connected these filters to the Keysight Vector Network Analyzer, I was able to make an estimate of what the values of the filter center frequency, bandwidth, and unloaded Q factor are. Unfortunately, there was no information that I received with these filters, and I was left to make a best guess of how the filters were designed to perform. So let's now execute the MATLAB code that I wrote and see how the algorithm works on the filter shown previously on slide 14. Before I do that, you will notice that my script file is very tidy. That is because I used MATLAB functions to do a lot of the heavy lifting that I described in slides 10 to 13. You can see listed the functions that I have used to perform the steps previously described, and I will not go into the minutia of those functions during this presentation. Needless to say, all of these functions are necessary in order to extract the behavioral circuit model. So now I am going to go over the MATLAB script file that I have written to take the network parameters and convert them into a readily usable folded matrix format. In the first section of the MATLAB script file, I am going to import the network parameter file of one of the filters that I measured. I will also include my estimates for the filter center frequency and equiripple bandwidth. In addition, I am going to include the frequency values that transmission nulls or zeros occur at. Finally, in this first MATLAB script section, I will be adding an offset in the calibration test plane. This will move the calibration from the cables that connect to the filters to the end of the electrical coupling assemblies inside the filters. In this next section, I am going to use a MATLAB function call in order to calculate the optimum reference plane offset angles as well as the poles and residues of the Y parameters given a normalized low-pass format. These results will be directly usable in subsequent sections of this script. In this next section, the transversal coupling matrix is determined. Since the poles and residues are determined from measured data, it may be more conducive to populate the transversal matrix elements with values from any of Y11, Y12, Y21, or Y22. And thus, there are four options that you can choose from to obtain a desirable transversal matrix format, each of which uses a different combination of the Y parameter matrix elements previously listed. Next, Similarity transformations are applied to obtain the folded matrix format. The particular sequence of similarity transform steps follows those described by Richard Cameron in the references already listed. At this stage, you may or may not have a folded matrix that is in its desired format. In order to get it into its desired format, the Y matrix representation of the folded matrix will have to be constructed and elements of the folded coupling matrix will need to be annihilated in order to get the folded coupling matrix into its desired final format. With both the annihilated folded coupling matrix and the associated Y matrix format, network parameters can be calculated and subsequently compared against measured data for the same network. An optimization function is then used to adjust coupling matrix values in order to obtain a folded matrix result that has a similar network parameter response to the measured data contained in the S2P file read in earlier. 
Once the optimization routine has converged, we can plot the optimized results and compare it to the measured results. The admittance matrix is constructed and the S parameters of the extracted model are then calculated. So drum roll please, let's see how we did. As you can see from this selected result, the measured data and the data generated from the extracted model are a very good match for each of the four S parameter elements. Reflection and transmission nulls almost overlay perfectly and the transition range from full reflection to transmission corresponds quite closely. A very strong result. Let us also take a look at the final format of the coupling matrix. From the result obtained, a high degree of confidence is established that direct comparisons between this extracted model and a golden reference model can be made and mechanical adjustments can be made based off of the differences between the two matrices. These differences could be adjustment of the tuning mechanisms, the positioning of the electrical coupling structures at each of the input and output of the filter or the cross coupling structures inside the filter. So why do all of this work? Or put another way, where does all of this stuff bring value to you? Well, there are two ways that value can be found in implementing a workflow that uses the techniques described today. First, the workflow can be used to shorten the design cycle of cavity filters, specifically during the prototyping stage where all a designer has to work with is black box network parameters. The second place where this workflow can add value is in a manufacturing environment. For any large-scale production run of high-performance cavity filters, there is ramp-up time that is required to get manufacturing staff to a point where they can optimally tune filters. This ramp-up time affects the overall cost of manufacturing and it affects your bottom line. With a technique based on what was presented today, upfront development work will need to be done for each new filter introduced into a manufacturing environment. However, if the filter design group and the manufacturing group are each part of the same company or organization, the design inputs required for the manufacturing phase of the filter life can be the outputs from the design phase of the filter. Thus, a streamless transition from design to manufacture can occur, a desired outcome for any organization that combines engineering and manufacturing. To wrap up, let's go over what we talked about today. First of all, I showed you how to automate test and measurement tasks with use of a MATLAB script that uses a combination of MATLAB functions and Skippy commands. Then, I showed you how to convert measured black box data for passive microwave components, specifically microwave coupled resonator filters, into an equivalent circuit representation that can be compared against a golden reference model realized during the filter synthesis stage of a microwave filter design.